I hope you are doing okay, Mom. I know everyone took this hard, and to tell you the truth, so have I. I have realized one thing since I came down here. I realize how content my life was just having my family. But do not be upset, Mom. Your boy will be home soon. I love you all so much. I miss you. With much love, David. My name is Mary Jane McWilliams. I am the Gold Star mother of Sergeant David James Smith, United States Marine Corps. David and I had a very, very close relationship ever since the day he was born, really. I mean, all mothers do, all mothers do, but he and I were, were so, so close. He was such a dear child, very loving child, always writing little love letters and, uh, um, you know, drawing me pictures as a young boy. My dreams for David as an adult, um, I was hoping that he would go to college, get his degree, be happy in the choice that he made as a career. I often told him it's not always about the money. You have to, you have to work where your passion is. Huh. That's why he went into the military now that I've, <laughs> now that I just said that. I started getting wind of David having an interest in joining the Marines. Um, I chose to ignore it because it was not something I wanted him to do. I was terrified. It took me a while to accept it. But I have to make this clear, the whole time I was enormously proud of him. Enormously proud. Just selfishly, I wanted him out because I didn't want anything to happen to him. When he left for Afghanistan, our goodbye was heart-wrenching. Um, I swear he knew. I swear he knew something. I can still, you know, just looking, I can still see his face. I can still see the tears going down his cheeks. Um, I'll never forget it. I'll never forget. We were um, put on the plane to Germany. I can't tell you what airport, I can't tell you what airline. We arrived at Landstall and I, I don't remember anything but walking into that room and seeing him laying there. So I went up to him and I tried to wake him up. You know, I grabbed hold of his arm and uh, I said, David, you need to stop this and you need to get up, wake up. Mom's here, Dad's here too. And I opened his eye and I could see there was nothing there. The doctors had pulled us in into a conference room and they told us that he was gone. And I asked them, I said, uh, surely you can use my, my brain stem, any body parts that you need. I've lived long enough. Let him walk out of here. And the surgeon just looked at me. He said, you can't transplant a brain. And that's when I knew. That's when I knew. I guess when I, I realized the only thing I wanted to do was just look at him. I looked at his feet to make sure he'd taken care of his feet. I looked at his eyes, his face. I just, I just wanted to touch him. My heart was broken. My heart was broken. And I knew I had to break the heart of his sister and his brother, let alone our large extended family. The natural order of things, of course, is for the parents to go first. So when a parent has to bury their child, there's no rhyme, there's no reason, there's no logic, there's nothing that can explain it away, help you. It's, it's so very difficult to, to describe. It just shouldn't be. It just should not be. David had made the decision to be an organ donor, so I was his executor of his will. And um, I, I will say that David's donation saved 
the lives of six other people. And they're all doing very well. And I know that he would be so proud of that. I know he would. Looking down, I would say that David would want us to continue living, continue enjoying life because, oh my, did he enjoy life. He, he would be so angry <laughs> with me, especially, you know, if I just dissolved and fell apart. I think he would want us to remember him and remember him with a smile. And I, I think that, um, I think he just wants us to be happy.